بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم تالار پی ناس تو تولو خوان دوبرونو استادانو تا پانتون رئیس سپتا سلامون آورد نوای بیلومم چی منگا پریزنتیشن مبراندی کو شریکو کلا نکلا انتقادای کی گیشی فامیلی شو بکی باید وغیی گو خوز منگ برنامه نداشت دشمن من وارد پانگریزی شو بوغیی گو ترسو دشبار نوارها خواهد آملا منگا داشت دکوچی کتاسی وارد اسکالرشپ استالار لاروم پیدا کی نو انگریزی شو با داغ دپار هاتمان نه نو پما گساز باندی نن نه نه پریزنتیشن اوز منگ استاسی باز با تور پانگریزی کی so once again let me extend heartfelt gratitude to organizers of today's event and I welcome you all to today's event. Why are we here and how much time are we going to have? We probably will be taking your 90 minutes or two hours time, valuable time, and we'll make sure this two hour time is a really valuable addition to your um, learning and to your knowledge and to your skill set um, and we'll write we would like to make sure that we'd like to make sure that um, we are able to influence uh, you people at the end and by end of uh, today's session we should have some really um, good number of students who would be really uh, willing to go and opt for this uh, scholarship so I have with myself, uh, Mr. Abdurrahouf Omari, who is the Vice President of Afghanistan Chivning Alumni Network. And then we have Ms. Zarghuna Mangal, uh, who is uh, our Chivning Alumni. She graduated in 2017. And uh, she'll be sharing her experience with us. And then we have Mr. Um, Said Mohammed Shinware, who is our Communication Manager. Uh, and we'll try to make sure we have a very interactive session. So before we proceed, uh, let me ask if or you are all awake. I mean, mentally, is everybody here? Yes. Give me a big yes. Is everybody here? Yes. Everybody here? Yes. Now that's fine, yeah. So now you're finally listening. So, uh, first of all, <clears throat> uh, sorry. First of all, why uh, do we have to opt for scholarships? And why do we have to study abroad, right? Uh, the foremost and the first thing that um, should come to your mind is that we all have our limitations. Uh, Abdul Baqi said made my job very easy because he had an extensive explanation of uh, why we should go study abroad, why do we need qualified people in our country. Um, there are a lot of people who are willing to go abroad and to study there, uh, but not many people know how to do that and how to get those scholarships. I wanted to go to UK in 2001 uh, to go there to work there and to study but that was a difficult option because when you go and work there and then support your studies too uh, that means you have to work for 12 to 13 hours and then you have to study for four to five hours and then you have very little time to uh, sleep uh, that is a very difficult option. Plus, there it, it, it also is a lengthy process in terms of uh, financial support, in terms of documentation. So these international scholarships that we have, they all provide you a very golden opportunity uh, to come forward, to apply, and to go and explore your dreams. Um, and that is why we are here. The problem we have is a big communication gap. There are a number of scholarships which are looking for qualified applicants. And they really are looking for qualified applicants. And they're not finding it. Why? Because not many people are applying. Not many people are willing to come forward and apply for these scholarships. And that is why it's a very poor pool of applicants from which they have to pick. Now, if there are a lot of scholarships, a lot of applications, and there are a lot of very good applications, so these scholarships will have to think that, okay, there is a big demand. Right? And that is why they'll increase the number of scholarships. Today we have an opportunity in Afghanistan uh, that there are scholarships from UK government, from France, from Holland, NOFAC scholarship of Holland, um, Korean Development Institute scholarship from Korea, Japan scholarship, India scholarship, and there are a number of them. But not many people, although they are very competent, although they know very good English, they're not able to win them. Why? Because there are some techniques, there are some 
ways and strategies that you need to adopt to be able to present good application, right? Uh, there are two things, knowing and showing. So there are a lot of people, they know a lot of things, right? Which is good, uh, but at times it's very important to show how much you know that. And that is where most of people fail, and that is why we are here, how you can present um, your, what you know, uh, your experience and your exposure. Uh, so there are a lot of scholarships, and not many people are coming forward, and we are trying to make sure that most of you come forward, you fill your applications properly, and you get this opportunity to go and study abroad. See, if you're, um, there are a lot of people who want to go to UK, and they would be ready to spend thousands uh, to get whatever way they want, right? Uh, but these scholarships provide a very easy, if you're qualified and competent, very easy way to go and uh, spend your valuable time at some very good universities, right? How? They give you money for your um, living expenses, they pay your piece. If you're going on your own and you want to study in UK, you have to pay around 17 to 18,000 uh, pounds only tuition fee then air ticket and accommodation at least you need five to six hundred or seven hundred pounds to uh, support your accommodation so but these scholarships provide you an opportunity where you can go and just focus on your studies spend valuable time at one of the best universities of the world if you're qualified enough through chivning scholarship you can make it to uh, oxford university to cambridge university we have just heard the names right but this is the opportunity for you. Uh, plus, we are targeting different students. Um, we are targeting fresh graduates, uh, like we got some of the students who are from outside who are ready to apply. They have their bachelor degree on hand, and they'll be applying this year. Maybe they get it, maybe they don't get it. If they get it, very good. If they don't, what is the loss? It's learning, which you add to your knowledge and you apply again the next year and then the next year. So the first principle is not giving up. The first principle is not giving up. There are some people, they apply, they make serious efforts, um, they uh, allocate valuable time to it and energy, and at the end they're not getting selected, and then they come again, and, I didn't get selected. Okay, fine, so, I mean, so, apply next year. So if you're not getting selected one year, apply next year. Don't stick to one scholarship. Apply to many scholarships, right? And then we are targeting uh, a lot of students who are now in the first semester of their bachelor's or in the second year of their bachelor's studies. So they have the time to start preparing from now, right? So those of you who are studying now, you might not be applying this year, but you are now preparing yourself for the coming years, because learning and preparation takes time. Um, so there was a British Prime Minister um, after Second World War. When the Second World War reached UK, he made a, an historic speech, and uh, that speech completely changed the mindset of uh, British people, and then they were able to win the war against Germany. And this is one of the best speeches of the world. So Winston Churchill, he said that uh, it took me my whole year, my whole life, to prepare this two, three, or four minute speech. So it's an effort of all my life to be able to give this inspiration speech of two, three minutes, which changed the whole course of the history, right? The same applies to your applications. So you have to write, for example, for Chivning, you have to write four, short essays or you have to answer four short questions each question is 500 words and these 2000 words change your destiny they are, they make a difference between winning a scholarship and not being able to win it so that is why we have to think that it takes a whole experience of your life to write something very impressive really inspirational and really uh, motivational stuff on your Essays which can enable you to get to be selected from hundreds of other students will be applying. Now, coming to Shivning Scholarship, what makes it different from other scholarship? Number one, compared to many other countries, it's a one year program. So you are able to, if you're not able to or you cannot afford to stay away from home for longer time, 
can get it in one year. So you just go in this September and you return next September, right? So that is one of the uh, golden opportunities for those people who are not having time, particularly those people um, who have to support their families financially or having jobs. So you, it's easier to get a one year off from your office than two years. So that is one part. Secondly, you can go with your family, which is not the case with a lot of uh, other scholarships. So you, if there are any dependents that you have, uh, most of the married people, they have their family depends on them, for example, their wife and children. So the good opportunities, you can take them. Uh, Chivning doesn't support the family, but it gives you the opportunity, uh, but the scholarship amount that you get, uh, through that you can easily support your family. The, uh, next important thing is that it's very flexible in terms of giving you the opportunity to choose your the university and the course. Uh, there are uh, uh, there are lengthy processes and complicated processes uh, for many other scholarships. But in Chivning, um, it gives you a very good opportunity to go to select from a list of universities, go pick the best university, um, and apply for it. And your course, your study program, whatever you are learning. So it provides a very good opportunity to go and pick, pick from the best universities of the world. So uh, that is the second thing. Um, and the third thing is that um, it's a fair process, it's a transparent process, it goes through a layer of selection process. Um, there are hundreds of people, they apply for a scholarship, so only those who get selected, they consider it a fair process. Since I was selected in evening, so I can say it's a fair process. But the reality is that it really is a fair process because um, one stage, of, one round of selection is done in UK. So they don't have to do anything here. So it is done in London. And they send, they long list a list of people, around 200 people, less or more. And then another round is done here in Afghanistan. And one application is reviewed and marked by three, four people, different people. So they don't know who is scoring what. And then after that, all that scoring, there is a short list. And then there is an interview stage. And after interview stage, you get the opportunity to either win it or to apply next year. So that is uh, very important. So what we are going to uh, do today is to see uh, how to impress people there in the long list, how to prepare, impress people in the short list, in the interview, and then finally being able to win it. So we have divided today's uh, session into three, four questions. I'll be doing the first important question. Well, it's a lengthy application. You have to go through all the process. Um, but yeah, you have, what you have to do is that um, um, there are four important questions, which are your four brief essays. And the rest of the information is just general. So it's filling the application form. But these four questions are important. So we'll be doing it one by one. I'll be taking on the first one. But before we proceed, remember, English is the key. English language is the Key. I ask a lot of people, uh, how is your English? And they say, good. Uh, some people, they say it with different impression, right? Some people say it, it's good, and some people say it's good, right? So both of them are like how good it should be, how good it should be, and how good is acceptable, right? So the real thing is that there is a standard for English and English scoring, and that is IELTS and TOEFL. So you should be able to sit in IELTS exam or TOEFL exam and get 6.5. There are a lot of good speakers who, are, who go and apply for IELTS exam and they hardly score 5.5. Uh, so what is important? The important point is that you are able to score 6.5 IELTS, which means you are speaking, you are writing, you are reading and your listening skills. From all those perspectives, you are able to meet the requirements of the scholarship. Now, why English? Why we are focusing on that? Because you are going to study an English language there. You have to be a very good writer. You have to be a very good speaker. Remember, when I say writing, uh, rem the question of grammar and spelling, I'm not talking about that. That has to be perfect. That has to be correct. It has to be basic, correct English. And then it comes to your composition skills. Then it comes to your composition skills. For example, I teach at Kardani. I teach at Salam University. I teach at 
Salam University. Or I serve my Afghan brothers um, by teaching them or by sharing. I serve my Afghan brothers and sisters by sharing um, my knowledge um, at Salam University, right? So both of them are almost the same, but it's, it's a different way of saying things, right? So how you say it, how you choose words, uh, how you structure your sentences, and how you convey a meaningful message, that is um, why it matters. So we are not, when we say English, it doesn't mean that, okay, grammar, spelling, yeah, it has to be correct English. But then it goes to the next level where you are able to talk very professional English. You have to be very correct uh, in terms of both grammar and composition. So the first question is leadership. Uh, I've uh, discussed most of the general points, so I'm not sticking to them. Um, your university uh, faculty will share it, uh, the presentation with most of you. So it's a unique opportunity for f leaders, influencers, and decision makers, right? Now, who are leaders? If I say some very bright, vibrant students in the uh, female section of Salam University, so, are there some names that come to your mind? Give me some names. When I ask some very vibrant students, some students are well known and they're, they're very famous in their universities, right? So, are there some names that come to your mind? Some names? Come on, tell me some names. Marwa. Who is Marwa? Okay, she's there. And some other names? No, 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 I want you people. I want you people. And the same applies to them. There are out of a lot of students, they remember very few students, right? Like I teach a lot of students, but um, uh, there are only very few students. I know them by name. For example, one of the students there, Zaheen. So, uh, Uzma Zaheen, right? Yeah, I'm not very good name. Why I know her? Why I remember her name? There are a lot of students. Um, if you check my phone and the way I write names, it's a very lengthy coding system because I, it's hard to remember them. But I remember her name. Why? Because she's one of the bright students, she's one of the vibrant students who's making impact in the society. Right? The same applies to Marwa, right? Out of many students here, she has dedicated her time to uh, make sure that other than her studies, she can add value to the university. Right? They are the influencers, they are the leaders, and they are the people the university is looking for. And that is a message to all of you. The first message, that if you want to win these scholarships, you have to do something beyond your studies. You have to be really good in, with your studies, but beyond that, you have to be very good in the activities that are provide, per, performed, right? There are a number of activities, there are a number of competitions going across universities. So that is the next thing. So it includes the whole a bunch of things. Your accommodation, like when people go illegally, that is a different treatment. When you go legally, that's a different treatment. But when you are a Chivning Scholar, that is the best treatment that you can mm, uh, get. First of all, winning a scholarship. There are a lot of people, they tell me, I can afford to go with my own payment. So if I tell them, see, if you go and you study, that's a great thing, but if you win a scholarship and study and then you have this prestigious tag of Chivning alumni, that is a big thing because now you have gone through a process and then you were able to win what you have. So getting and winning are two different things. So travel costs and the amount of stipend that is paid on a monthly basis, you can even do some saving out of that and send back to your families. Um, if you are keeping your life simple, but they pay you enough amount. For example, if you are staying in London, you will be getting around uh, 14 to 13 to 1400 pounds per month. So you can easily spend uh, a month there. On arrival, you get some money to buy, to do some shopping, around five to 600 pounds. And then when you're departing, you get some amount of money. So it's a, a very good scholarship from a different, from different perspective. So uh, number one, you have to be from Chivning eligible country. Fortunately, Afghanistan is. Um, and uh, you should be ready to return to Afghanistan and work for at least two years. That is the promise that you make with them, that all the investment that you are do that is done on you. Um, so you have to come back and work for your people. 
and why because we need more people to work in Afghanistan we are getting more scholarship positions than any other country for example the population of Bangladesh it's uh, probably more than 200 million and uh, they are getting I think less than 10 scholarship or 10 scholarships Afghanistan's population is roughly 30 million and we are getting 22 scholarships so now you can imagine how much opportunity we have compared to many other countries so uh, country of citizenship and you should be able to come back and work for two years and then um, you have to choose three different universities choosing universities is also not very difficult my other friends will talk about it uh, so you choose different universities three shortlist them and you pick three courses uh, in those universities and then uh, English language requirement by July uh, 2021 uh, this year uh, the English language requirement has been exempted uh, I was very surprised when some of the people were congratulating each other making a news out of it that wow this year there is no re English language requirement so I believe those who are thinking big uh, English language requirements should not be an issue of celebration you're going to study an English language in one of the prestigious universities why should that be a big deal for you people so make sure that even if the requirement is not there you make it perfect then 6.5 in IELTS um, you can go with TOEFL and IELTS or 79 with minimum score in each 5.5 uh, if you're getting 6.5 but you're not able to get 5 in speaking so you will not be considered even if you have been selected even if you have been picked up if you even if you're the top scorer in the interview stage even if you have uh, recommendation and um, um, letters um, what do you call it application what do you call it you deal with it every day um, unconditional offers even if you have offers from universities right so if you're not able to score 5.5 minimum if you've scored 6.5 and you were not able to score 5.5 on reading, so Chivning will not consider you. So that is why English is the top priority. Um, then we have references, so it can be your teacher, your professional, your colleagues. Um, and then it's general things about uh, your uh, work with your uh, reference letter. And then work, work experience, a minimum two-year experience. Now you would be saying we are students, so where is going to be the experience? So it can be a full-time job, it can be a part-time job, it can be even volunteer work which counts. And that is why uh, people who are standing in this uh, room, um, all the facilitators, this can be included. This is your volunteer experience. And this is an opportunity, a message to all of you that if you are engaged in some volunteer work, that is going to be considered. It can be paid, it can be unpaid so I'm not going into details there is a proper calculation method where where you can go and download the Excel sheet and start uh, getting if you are having the minimum uh, two years experience this is the timeline it starts this November and it completes um, by August next year when you will be getting those who get selected when they get their passport and their visa um, and they are ready to go and the semester um, starts in uh, September so in September their studies begin until the next September so this is a flow I'm not going into details there are a lot of there are these courses some people ask me oh, what are the courses that we should pick uh, which should increase our chances don't go to all those um, wrong ideas uh, the most important thing is that what you have picked you have a strong reason for it what you have picked you understand what you are picking and what you have picked you see a broader future for yourself in that and you see you can make a big difference in this country if you get the opportunity to score or to to get to go there in Afghanistan we have very limited faculties I was asking one of the um, concord applicants uh, the number of the courses that are listed it's very limited but there there is a whole range of courses from, from traditional courses like economics and governance and development economy to very niche markets where you even go to study film studies and so cooking and so on and so forth. So, uh, and people do masters in cooking. Uh, 
that's their choice. So if you have a strong reason for that, go for it. And there is a whole range of uh, courses that you need to do. Online application, remember, independence is the key. By independence, I mean you have to go find the website. I'm giving you the reference. Go read it yourself. Go study it yourself. Go try to make sure you understand that, right? So go to website and start getting the instructions from there. Applications, so you ha again have to go choose your own university, right? Choose your own university, um, go fill the application form, and within one or two weeks you will get the response. Simple process. You can even go, even if you're not qualified, just go and try it. Go visit some university websites, uh, fill their forms, and you'll get a response for that. Now that there comes the four golden questions. And they make the difference between winning and not winning. I don't call it losing. It's like if you, if you don't win it, you learn a lot. So you didn't lose anything. You'll be applying next year. Uh, I'll be discussing briefly the first question, which is leadership. So who do you think can be a good leader? Give me some answers. Who is a leader? When you, when you think about leader or word leader, what comes to your mind? Yeah? Okay, good. Uh, if you give me some specific names. Come on. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, tell me the name of the leader. Don't discuss it with each other. So, if there is any name, come on, share it with me. Ahmad Shah Masood, good. Anybody else? Yes? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, uh, coming to our own level, in university, in your classes, if you have to pick one, regardless of any jealousy, uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if, if you have to pick one of your classmates, that, okay, this person is going to be the future leader, right? She is going to make a difference in the society. So come on, give me some names. Don't... Marwa, okay. Okay, forget about Marwa. Anybody else? Atifa, what's good about her? Why do you think? Okay, she can motivate others, very good. Yeah? Yeah? Nazia? Nuri, yeah, she's there, right? So, why did you pick her? She led you, and where was she your team leader? Okay, okay, can you tell us more about this event? And can you speak a bit louder? Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and she inspires us a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. And we um, work together uh, to achieve our goals. Yeah. So you think she's a good leader? So these are some of the names uh, which you have. And you have to make sure while you are studying, you have to make sure you start engaging in the activities so people start taking your name you have this ability to lead people for example if i um, ask you people that i need two three names who are, uh, who can come on the stage and uh, take attendance so very few students will raise their hands right these are influencers these are the leaders these are the qualities that scholarships including chivning they look for it those who are making an impact in the society right all of you are sitting, these facilitators are standing, right? They are trying to make an impact so that this event is more uh, attractive, so that it is more organized. So, that is the thing. So, the first question is leadership. What it says? Shivning is looking for individuals that will be... Come on, read it all together. One, two, three. Read it. Shivning is looking for individuals. Right? Some of the people were having competition. They wanted to finish it fast, right? So they were a bit in a rush. 
the 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 major issue is that there is a lot you can talk about there is a lot you can write but uh, there is a word limit so 500 word is the word limit what it says right how you meet this requirement are you a leader let me ask you this question are you a leader yes. right how why do you think you are a leader yes why do you think you are a leader because you're leading up? Yeah, that is leadership skill, right? The problem is when you talk about leadership, people directly go to political figures, right? Uh, people with 20,000 followers on Facebook or Twitter, people at the parliament, people working in the government, right? You are leaders yourself. You just need to look into yourself. She's leading a family. Anybody else? Come on. Why do you think you are a leader? Good. I'm mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You meet the first requirement. Yeah. Because uh, my working experience is uh, matching with this uh, scholarship mm -hmm. because I'm leading mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it's almost uh, eight years since I graduated from the university. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited and I'm really excited to see the results. Mm -hmm. One question is done. Yeah. And uh, two years is needed. You have yeah, eight years experience. So I think I'm leading the network because I have a best network for the country and for the government. Yeah. Other agencies. And have okay. We stick to leadership only and then we come yeah. to networking, right? Good, thank you. So you got two different examples, right? What is the difference between these two examples? Leadership example from your personal life, leadership example from professional life. So you have, you can prove it through different or your volunteer work where you are making a social impact. So from that perspective, you can give examples. So what it says, why do you think uh, you are a good leader, right? Give clear examples. She gave an example and a set of examples. And while she was giving you example of her professional life, she added two, three more things. She's a motivator, she's an influencer, and these are probably the qualities of a good leader. So you, you should be able to give clear examples. And remember, you have word limits, so you cannot give lectures in that. So you share examples from there, and then you are done. So this is the first question where you have to make sure. Now this is a message to all those who are not yet ready. To all those who are not yet ready to start asking yourself this question. Why do you think you are a leader? Are you a leader? Who is a leader? What are the qualities of a good leader? What makes you a good leader? What are the works and activities that you have done that reveal that you are a good leader? Right? So the first question is leadership. And then, with this, my part is finished, um, and uh, I took slightly three minutes more than what I should have taken, but anyways. Um, now, the networking, um, the study in UK and future plan. Each of our uh, alumni, they'll be speaking, they'll be coming forward and sharing their own experiences. Once they are done, we'll have a question answer session. Uh, make sure you save some of the questions for that session. And uh, with that, um, um, I'd like to thank you uh, for your attention. I hope it was uh, useful and helpful. Thank you very much. Manana, the Shah Ibrahimi Sahib, Saha. Now it's time to invite Mr. Said Muhammad Chinwari, and he's going to explain you the next state that's networking. All right. So it's time for Mr. Gonamangal. Please uh, proceed to the stage. Hello, everyone. I'm Zaguna Mangal. They introduced me. I was a UK Chevening alumni for batch 2017 and 2018. My major was finance and banking at University of uh, Kent. 
I will be talking about the you study in UK. Of course, this question is. Is that? Okay. Yeah. This fine. Okay. Uh, this question is asking about uh, uh, what major you're going to study in UK. And um, of course, you're going to select uh, three universities, and your courses will be uh, specific related to universities. Uh, mostly students are uh, trying to uh, randomly pick the university and just uh, put their name in these questions and later on they just, when they finish, uh, when they are done with their application uh, for the evening, after that they are trying to apply for the university. But I will say that it's a wrong attempt. Uh, mostly students are failed to get the offer from the universities uh, uh, this way. So I will suggest that whenever you start your uh, application for the evening, try hard uh, to at the same time uh, uh, to, to search for universities, uh, the courses that you want to uh, apply for. Uh, so at the same time, parallel, you will be able to uh, fill up your ap evening application and also uh, for the uh, courses that you are planning uh, to study at the UK. Uh, the content of this uh, uh, question is saying that why you choose the university, the courses, and how your pre previous academic or professional experience are related. Uh, uh, you, you, like it's a, when you are choosing a course, you should be able to address that course or uh, that uh, uh, to your academic uh, uh, background like you are inspired for the, from the major that you have studied in your undergraduate and you want to pursue that for your master's degree as well. So that will be a solid reason for you to, to explain the course that you have choose. Or, uh, or you just studied your undergraduate in something and you get the opportunity to work in another major and uh, you, you are not able to, uh, to work at the same profession that uh, uh, you, you have studied your undergraduate. So, is that it's working? Is that? So, uh, so uh, like your professional background also can inspire you to pursue your uh, master degree. Like it's not uh, the, the compulsory requirement that whatever is your undergraduate, you should 100% go for your master degree uh, as well to, with the same measure. Like uh, there is something, even though some of the people are like, they just studied medical, but somehow you know that medical is a, a, a degree that takes lots of years. Some, some people get bored at some stage and they, they feel that, okay, they made a mistake, they want to change their major. But uh, the main point is that uh, what you, like if you change, like if you go to the business administration or you finance, you should be able to address uh, the, the solid reason for, for uh, the, the, the changes that you have brought in your cho choices. So, uh, uh, like, the, there, will be, uh, there will be a logical uh, sequence, uh, like a logical reasons for, for the choices that you have made for your university. Like, generally, for all of the questions, I, I said that there should be a logical sequence, uh, like, you can't, uh, answer your leadership uh, uh, question in one way and another and just come and jump to the study in UK and address this question in another way. So, so you have to be able to, to address and link these all answers properly. So that, that will be a, the face of a successful uh, application. Um, uh, beside uh, this, uh, uh, I just want to uh, uh, add something uh, else that uh, most of the students that they are planning uh, to apply for this year. Uh, okay, of course they, they have uh, our social media address, so I'm just getting lots of questions that okay, is that, uh, is it's true that uh, Chivnik uh, omit the IELTS score requirement for this year? Uh, even though if you go to the Chivnik application portal and you didn't see this requirement in th there, but universities will definitely ask you for this score. Uh, so, so you can't, uh, so it's a, like a trick uh, that they are playing with uh, uh, you guys. Uh, you should uh, definitely go for uh, the uh, IELTS score. I will just say uh, for my personal experience, I'm, 
I guess among these uh, all applicants, I will be the only one that I applied for this uh, scholarship for three times. <laughs> I didn't make it for in once. Uh, but uh, the only thing that, as uh, Raheem Saib said, that I had the consistency and commitment, that, and I want this thing uh, definitely. So that's why, consecutively, three years I did uh, this. Finally, I get it. But uh, one thing that I want to uh, share for my own experience uh, as a female, I was just uh, uh, giving th these two topics that I have to uh, talk about the study in UK and also the experience of a female uh, when they go there and just level what the challenges they are facing. Is that it's working? OK, the only challenge for a female is that we will get homesick quickly because we are living in a uh, collective uh, society. We are family-oriented people. And uh, for females in Afghanistan, it's really like rare that, that, that they go and live alone and just do everything by their own. Uh, they are not getting this opportunity all the time. So I was also homesick. It was a little bit challenging at the beginning because one, the course is one year and it's a little bit intense. Uh, and making with this being away from your family at the beginning, it's, it's a little bit tough. But uh, it, in other terms, how you live there is that it's safe, is that you are able to make it by your own. I would say that the, those are not the challenges, especially in countries like, you, like UK. Uh, especially those who are a little bit more religious and they just want to practice their own uh, religious uh, ideas. We, we, uh, I was the person that I really enjoyed my religious practices in US UK because we had a mosque in, in our campus and the Ramazan that I had in UK was like totally different from other Ramazans that I was having. Uh, in Afghanistan because everything was in the mosque and I was even though we were eating in the mosque so um, it's uh, it's not that difficult for female that she will be not be able to make it it's uh, more easy their environment is like quite prepared people are so much supportive yes in terms of that as uh, Raheem Saib insists that you guys should be able to to work on your English properly because you you all are going uh, to study in English. For me, the challenge was a little bit, uh, the, the one of the reasons that I was not able to make it at the uh, second attempt was the IELTS score, that I was not able to make 6.5. Uh, that's why my application dropped. Otherwise, I had the uh, conditional offer, just the score was the condition. Um, and uh, when you are going there and you are just studying and sitting in the class, the accent of teacher there are like teachers from different countries and uh, coping with those and getting the lectures from them is a little bit, uh, is another challenge, I, I would say. So uh, it's better to, to when you're, uh, like I said that a uh, churning application is not uh, the process of like uh, when the, uh, the scholarship is opening and you're going to work for three months and uh, just done. It's a one-year process, and you need to even start one year ahead from this if you truly want this thing. So, I, and I was doing the same thing. Like I said, that I just—it took me three years to to take this uh, a scholarship. So, uh, the last I would just sum up with this thing that uh, when you are applying for this universities, make sure to start your application at the same time that you are that you want to, uh, that when you are starting your chirping application, please make sure that you guys shouldn't be among those people, the questions that I'm receiving through social media, even though people are asking me, what is the website of uh, chirping? Uh, these are the most simple questions that to, with one click, we, can, we are able to find it through Google. Uh, and uh, those who are just at the early stage of their, their undergraduate, I would suggest that make sure to, to not just stick to your chapters or the, the, the books that you're uh, having in your curriculum in university. Please read extracurricular uh, uh, information, books. Uh, we, 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 we didn't have this opportunity as you guys having. We n never had someone to give us a presentation and give information about these uh, uh, scholarships. So I would uh, just share uh, 
these few things that make make sure to be uh, prepared from now even though if you are at the first year of your undergraduate if you want to go ahead and if you want to be someone so this is the great opportunity thank you so much special thanks from Ms. Savannah for briefing our students regarding their study in UK so now it's time to go back to the second question and I would like to call upon Mr. Said Mohammad Chinwari for coming forward in answering this particular question. Uh, let me share with you the second question on networking. Before starting the subject, uh, I want to tell you a story, a brief story. I was working on a project in a ministry, I'm not going to say its name, it's not good. Uh, we were working as a team on a project and uh, we received a letter from another ministry and they had conducted a research and they wanted us to do another thing in that report. And a team was assigned to, to carry on that task. And what happened was surprising. I was not really involved in that team, but indirectly I was in there. So we assigned a team of three to four people and they started working on that project. And they worked on it like nearly for 20 days or one month and they were really struggling in some aspects of that project and then I called the person and I said let me read the question let me read the report what do they want and I'm not good in the re or even my own language uh, but I read the text very carefully and I didn't expect what it was there the letter were referred to us as, a, as an information. The project attached to that letter was a study conductor conducted in water sector in the country and they had just informed us on what is needed to be done. And our team was working on it like nearly for one month. And finally I asked the responsible person it's really surprising, Rahimi said. I ask that read the question again. They have just told us, they just told us like they have done this study, these are the problems, and we have to do certain things. So we were just simply informed. Why I uh, just told you this story is to read the question very carefully. So as my colleagues share with you their experiences and uh, suggested you that how you should work on your application, I'm just uh, going to revise a few things. The most important thing in shifting, uh, shifting application is elaborating your work experience, writing reference letters, and four questions. Right, so it's the second question. And we have four questions. And one of the uniqueness of this scholarship is you have too much space to write and elaborate yourself. For example, there are other scholarships where you are supposed to write only one page. So now, if I'm giving you one page and I want you to explain yourself and share your ideas with me, plans with me, this is one thing. Another opportunity, giving you 10 pages so which one will you prefer? Definitely 10 pages. Because you need more space to write and you need more words to elaborate yourself and show you, share your ideas with the, with the readers. 
So this is another uniqueness of the uh, uniqueness of this scholarship that you have too much space and you have too much words to write. So that's the, the reason I'm revising this thing again, and I want you to focus on them, them, preparing your reference letters carefully. And it's not at this stage; it will be done like in next March, right? Next February, I think. Yeah. So reference letters four questions, each question 500 words, and experiences. So uh, I'm doing the second question. I'm not uh, going to spend my time on other things. Networking. Uh, this was a story, and I did this just to do a simple task. Let me read the question together. Read with me, right? Shivning is looking for individual with strong networking skills. Repeat this word. Strong networking skills. Good. Who will engage with Shivning community? Engage with Shivning community, second thing. And influence and lead others, third thing. In their chosen profession. Not leading a doctor, not leading an engineer, not leading an economist. You would be able to lead people, community in your own, in your own area, regardless of, uh, well, whatever you have chosen for your career. Let me read the next. <clears throat> Explain how you meet this requirement. What is required for these things? Again, using clear examples, you can, you can give examples, of your networking skills and outline how you hope to use these skills in the future. Your hope and then in the future. So what we have learned from this slide to analyze the question, right? So let me analyze the question on the next slide. OK. <clears throat> OK, before analyzing the question, I just added another slide to my presentation. Uh, what is the reader looking for? Another uh, thing is to focus. Your ability to initiate, build, and maintain relationship leading to your professional growth. Not only relationship, not only texting, not only conducting parties and get together, right? For your professional growth. Another thing, your ability to contribute to society by building teams and working in it. We know that team building and working as a team is the topmost priority in any area you're working in, right? So your ability to contribute to society, the reader is looking for this thing, right? Benefiting Shivning community and being benefited from it. How will, how will you contribute to society? And specifically, how will you contribute to Shivning community? This is Shivning community. I'm standing here with my colleagues, and we have spent our own resources, right? And we are doing this happily, just to find people who have the ability to, to go ahead and work in the society and serve this country. And I'm giving back, right? So this is the thing which the reader is entrusted to find. Building Shivning community and, well, sorry, benefiting from the Shivning community, benefiting the Shivning community and being benefited from it. And it also gives me a lot. So the next thing is, uh, which I did in the first slide, is to analyze the question. Let's do this. Analyze the question. <clears throat> Individual with strong networking skill, let me remind you one thing. This is not a lecture. This is not a, a written script. You will be writing your 500 words on networking. You will have the opportunity to express yourself in networking. How are you? What is your plan to build network? Why are you doing network? What will you give to your, your team? Or what will you get from the team? So you are supposed to write 500 words on this topic personally, not writing definitions. So that is why I emphasize that read these things carefully and just do some brainstorming in, brainstorming in your head, right? 
So the second stage was to analyze the question. Let's do this. Individuals with strong networking skills, they want these people, will engage with the shivning community and influence and lead others in the chosen profession. There may be many people among you who might have never thought to apply to such scholarship, but now we are giving you this presentation and this information, and maybe there are people among you who might have been inspired, inspired just right now, and they may plan to apply this year or next year. So this is the reason. We'll engage with the shivning community and influence and lead others in, the, in their chosen profession. Another thing, how you meet this requirement? How? Difficult question, right? You can do a literature search, you can find anything online, and you can write definition. But how are you going to do this? Next thing, clear examples of your networking skills. Give some strong networking skill. In the next slide, I'll be sharing with you how to do this. But this is just analyzing the question. How you hope to use this skill in future, another great area of interest that they are showing in it. Let's do this next. OK. <clears throat> How should you write your essay? I will take nearly five to six, seven minutes, right? OK. Uh, how are you going to write your application? I'm repeating the question because I think there may be some confusion that this is just definition and sharing with you information. No. You are supposed to write 500 words on your networking. How should you plan your essay? How should you write? What's, what should be the style of writing? Let's uh, do work on it. Distribute your essays as I did. It's just a quick one. It's not strongly recommended. You can go away from this. And let me remind you another thing on the previous slide. You can further break down each of these questions. Right? Just make many questions and then write their answers. And by the end of the day, you will be able to compose all these questions and answer and write a strong essay. So, <clears throat> distribute your essay across academic atmosphere, social atmosphere, and work environment. Uh, how do you work with people? Why do you work with people? And why it is needed to work with people? What will happen if you don't work with people? You will be alone. So the thing is, this question, to answer this question, and make sure that you have too much words to write. It's sometimes difficult to write many words, right? And stretching your words is not a good idea. Just write many words. It's a 500 words essay. You write just 2,000 words and then make 500 nice words. Don't try to stretch words. That's why there are many strategies, strategies which you can adopt and plan your essay. So what I think is this one. Academic atmosphere. In academic atmosphere, how do you work with people? In school, university, academic gathering and conferences and workshops, and future projection. At school level, we know that it's not really the time to work with people. And I mean, it's not the scope of any person to work in team. And so that's why I just did simple touch. On school level, you can just give a slight touch that you work with team members and you were distributing food or stuff with your colleagues and how you try to resolve conflict among children and stuff like that. So you could just give a slight touch on school level. At university level, you are supposed to focus on it. For example, at university level, you can further just, uh, analyze the question and you can further say what was your networking with teachers, with students, and academia, and external academias. So this is the reason if you analyze these things, you will have many words to write. Another thing is academic gathering and conferences like this. You can quote this conference or similar other conferences and you can say you will work you are working as a team to organize people and lead people and 
uh, distribute food or stuff, anything. So then you can connect this with networking, not leadership. Uh, one of the problem is sometimes when we write essays is sometimes we explain the same thing in leadership essay and networking essay. So now if you are quoting that you have contributed to this seminar should be networking oriented, that you know something, you familiarize with someone new. So this is the idea of dif differentiating from each uh, essay. Another thing is uh, social atmosphere. What's your role in community, national level, regional level, and project future? How will you utilize your networking skill and work in future in teams, in different organization, or any other event? Uh, another thing, work environment. How do you communicate with your subordinates, with your supervisor, employer, and other people? I emphasize again that we should be doing, we should be focusing on networking, not on leadership, not on planning, not on planning in the UK. Whichever essay you are doing, you should be sticking to the title. For example, if you are writing something on work environment, and you say like you work with people, and I organize things, and I support people, and I get direction from my supervisor, and I'm doing good job or bad job or whatever, this is, this is slightly tended toward leadership. What you are supposed to do is to purely focus on networking. So I'm just quoting another example. You can say I have good relation with my colleagues with my, my supervisor. And why? Because we had to do on specific job, specific task. And what was the product? What was the impact? When we work together with my colleagues or supervisor or subordinate, we worked well and we got great impact, good result. So this is the idea that you should not be going away from the title, networking, right? Uh, a few things to be avoided, not really, well, applicable to this essay too, but it's a general thing. You, you should be applying this to every other essay too. Uh, bragging about yourself, not elaborating yourself. If you are a fresh graduate, and if you have not worked in this country or anywhere, like 10 years or 5 years, how can you say, like, you know ambassadors, you know ministers, or you know these and... Well, you can, understand, you can know any people, you can recognize people, but networking is all about maturity and working as a team for a specific thing. So look at reality. What is your level? And you should be talking on that level. So avoid bragging about yourself. Academic definitions of certain things. <clears throat> the people who read these essays are experts. They are professional people with long experiences, so that's why Avoid to just quote simple explanation and theories and definition, right? Everything is in the book. It is your story. You should be writing everything about yourself. Uh, theoretical approach, uh, slightly similar with the second point. Avoid theoretical appro approach. Just try to narrate stories, examples, and the reasons and the impact and the procedure. How are you doing some works? Why are you doing a certain job? And why are you on the team? Why are you working as a team? So situation and then procedure and then impact. So what was the impact at the end? Nearly at the end. The last thing I think, formatting and writing style. How to write your essays. Uh, if you have written everything, even 2,000 words, which you are going to shrink to 500 words, but what are you doing at the end? Formatting and writing style. It depends totally on you. How many points are you including in your essays? How you want to convince the reader that you are among the excellent people, excellent applicants? So it depends, but it's my suggestion that you should, you could, you could distribute your essays uh, across five to seven paragraphs. Use simple language, not tough definition. 
style or approach. It's very important. Uh, some people just adopt uh, chronological order and they say when I was a child, when I was in a school, when I was in a college, when I was in university, or when I was working and I will be doing this in future. It's not a bad approach, but it's very, uh, I mean, it's a very common approach. If you adopting this approach, carefully choose the words and style of writing. Because many of the people just start their essay with this sentence, when I was this and when I was a child. So this is one of the approaches which you can adopt, but you should be very careful in choosing the style of writing. Where are you starting and how are you starting? Another is thematic approach, which is not very common. You can simply pick a theme. For example, why, well, why are you excellent at networking? What is the need of networking? So you can simply pick a theme. For example, peace process in this country. You can simply pick this theme and you can say, I'm involved in this and I'm involved in that and it will be the result and it is the result and it is the reason. So it is a thematic approach. In this approach, you can just start your essay even with your recent job, with your current role. So different approaches. Uh, which you can adopt. These are some which I have written here. I think I am done with this. Thank you very much. We will pick questions at the end of the uh, presentation. Thank you very much. I would like to welcome Mr. Abdurraouf Omari uh, to be on stage and uh, give us a brief discussion on the last key, pa key factor of Chevening scholarship, that is career plan. Mr. Abdurraouf Omari. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim and good evening everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks to Salam University for arranging this beautiful event and I welcome you all, uh, students from Salam University and also students and maybe graduates, alumni from other universities. So I hope you enjoy. This is the last session, right? I mean the last part of this presentation. Then we will have uh, questions and answers session. So I will be very brief so that you have Lo lots of time to ask many questions so that you can answer. Most of the things that we discuss here, you can find it in the websites as well, especially the Chevening website, right? So it needs your research, do on them, and uh, make sure you get a lot of information. So I will be very brief. Happy with that? Okay, that's great. Uh, I will have a few words based on my experience on, on, on I mean, general points on, on, on Chevening Scholarship. Then I will have a few words about career plan, right? Uh, for Chevening Scholarship, what I think, what I believe, course selection is very important. Course selection. Before you go to write your essays, first choose co courses. Right? And course doesn't mean that, okay, whatever you like, you just go and choose it. You need to research. Course selection will ease, you know, the way you write your essays. It will create, you know, a, a, a good, you know, a roadmap for your essays. And it's very important. Even the shortlisting part, which happens in London, reading committee, it's called reading committee, they get inspired by <laughs> okay, uh, so course selection is very important. Uh, you know, those reading committees also would like to see, you know, very interesting courses. They are also tired of, you know, all many courses that our fans have applied and they have graduated. So they would like to see new courses, right? But that new courses, I mean, okay. Course selection should be based on three major, uh, you know, criteria that you choose. See your educational background, see your experience, and most importantly, look at the UK priorities in Afghanistan. That's very important, right? UK's priorities in Afghanistan. Maybe you choose a course, and then UK does not have a lot of interest in that course, based on its, you know, 
development priorities in Afghanistan. So you have to be very careful. Do you understand? What are the sources that you can find, or what are the sources that tells you to choose the right course? For example, you, you came to see in Afghanistan. Go and search and see what areas they want to focus or they want to work in Afghanistan. DFID, UK aid, there might be many other platforms as well. So course selection is very important, right? Uh, the next thing, uh, Shinwar Sahib must have also mentioned that, analyze the questions very carefully, right? Uh, description description. That's, you know, even they are bold here. They're looking for individuals who have clear post-study career plan. So it means your uh, post-study career plan should be clear, very clear. Outline your immediate plans upon, return, uh, upon returning home. So it means, OK, once I return, so what would be my immediate plan, right? And it should be based on your educational background, your professional experience, right? It should not be that you're now a specialist in an organization and then your immediate plan is to become a minister. So that's very interesting, right? So it's not very, uh, it's not logical, right? So it should, you should be very careful. And it should not be that when, 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 you, when you come back, you want to work for government. It, it even can be a project. You come, you say that I will work on this project on my own. And I'll, I'll, I'll give it to the government entities to look on that. Right? So it couldn't be anything, but make sure that it's very unique, new, interesting thing. Right? So analyze the question. That's my second advice. Course selection, analyze the questions. Do not, do not plagiarize. All your essays will go to software which shows plagiarism. Right? So if you even one word is plagiarized, you're in trouble. Do you understand? So if you have a quotation, that might be possible. If you have a quotation, you should acknowledge that, the way you do now, right? You should acknowledge, you should say the source and all that, you know, uh, procedure it has. Another advice is logical connection, interactive connection between all these four essays. That's very important. Logical connection. How, for example? Just give one example. You say that when I come back, I will be, uh, I, I, will, I, will, I will work on a, a water engineering project because Afghanistan has a lot of water and we don't have, it, for example, or let's say money laundering, our banking sector, anything. So that's your career plan, for example. And then your networking, your networking, there you have mentioned that I know a lot, for example, this very you know, simple example. In networking, you have mentioned that I know a lot of, uh, for example, uh, Islamic scholars. I know a lot of, you know, for example, um, doctors. That's, you know, the, there is no logical connection with with essays. So there must be, you know, all these essays should be linked with each other. Should talk with each other. So that's the next advice. Think big, think big, because they want to see those people who can come and they. They, they make big changes in Afghanistan in medium term and long term. So think big. Be careful that you, you, you want to be some, someone in the future. Uh, the last advice is that I, I applied once in DOT scholarship. I knew it, it is not going to be successful application, but I applied for that. It gave me, you know, some sort of experience. I got a lot of, I, 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 it, it was kind of a learning application for me. So don't, don't get dismayed, apply, and the more you apply, the more you write, the more you edit, the more you'll be you know, strong and successful. So these were some uh, few advices. Um, I mean, I'm running out of time. I said I will be short. So career plan, just write whatever you have in your mind. And that should be logical. That should be, you know, uh, interactive with your all sort of areas. Uh, when I was writing, it this is the I mean I was authentic, uh, authentically writing whatever was coming to my mind. But I was you know focusing on that and I was making it very beautiful. 
Uh, keep in mind that Rahim Saab helped me a lot in that in reviewing that he was my hamsaya neighbor, right? Tak 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 tak. The review karata. So you have to give a lot of trouble to people who are around and who who can adapt, who can review, and who can talk on your your your, for example, diseases. It's not an easy thing. Five hundred words, two thousand words. Forty six, two thousand words. Everyone can write 2,000 words in, in three, four hours, half a day. But I would say it, would, it could take even months to write beautiful 2,000 words. So it needs a lot of efforts. Dr. Matawelechi, the scholarship that I have given is a lot of work. So I was working, I was researching, I was playing with numbers, right? So you have to make yourself sick to be successful for this. And everybody of you can do it. I mean, there's no difference between me and you, right? Uh, you can use the smart and star models. When I was writing, I didn't use it. These are all those, uh, you know, managerial stuff that you can use it. But um, uh, make sure you're, as, as other colleagues said, it should be original, right? And it should be interesting. I hope it uh, was uh, informative and uh, will give you more time to ask questions, serious questions, right? Thank you very much.